Hello audience. It's been a while since the last video on this, so I thought I'd give you an update on what's going on with it. So, as you probably already guessed, I had to take a break from it, because I had to work on a bunch of other stuff. And I thought, I'll just wait till I get some free time and get back to work on it. So, I waited, and ended up getting even more busy. So, I had to think of a different strategy for this. So, what I'm doing now is working on it maybe a half hour or so every couple of days, and I've been making progress on it. Now since the last video I've done a few things. I took the wood framing apart, coated everything in wood primer, assembled it permanently, I made the front seat back panel, I made some permanent body mounting brackets for the front, I made the firewall brackets, but most importantly, I got two panels installed permanently. As you can see, the cowl panel and the side panel on the right side. The body man's working on them, getting them ready for paint. And I'm currently working on the left side panel, getting that ready to install permanently. So let's take a closer look at it. Now on the right side, as you can see, I made the mounting bracket for the frame. It's held onto the sill with three screws, like the original, only I offset it, so it's holding the sill a little further back. And I added a steel brace to go between that and the post to make it a little stronger. I also have the piece that holds the floorboards on attached. On the left side, I just made a mounting bracket pretty much like the stock one. And point out, because some of you mentioned this in previous videos, this screw here is exposed. There was one here originally, so I used a slotted head screw like it would have had. I added a tack strip across the bottom for the trim panel. I also need to add one across the center, which I haven't done yet. Now, on these 1913 and 14 bodies, because there's no structure on top of the cowl section, the front of the body is really dependent on the firewall to hold it together. Now, I made the mounting brackets for it. Now, this one up top, according to the forums, there's two different kinds. One had a web on each side, the other didn't. And it's debatable when which was used or for what purpose, but the one without the webs was easier to make, so I chose to make it that way. And then there's one at the bottom, which I made out of a piece of angle. Now some of these had two bolts on each side, some had one. Again, the one with one bolt on each side was easier to make, so that's what I went with. Now like I said in a previous video, I had to add to these door posts to angle them out a little, which I did and notched it out for the door striker. Now I'll mention more about installing the panels when we start putting together the left side. And here's the original. I just installed temporarily. And surprisingly, it fits pretty good. Almost perfectly. And the good news with that is I don't have to do any calculations or anything. I can just pattern this and make an exact copy. So, first thing I'm going to do is make a pattern of this and cut out a new one. And here's the beginning of the new panel. I've already cut it out, ready to go. Now, as usual, I cut it out oversize, and I'll trim it down as I start to form it. The only thing I cut right on target is this line here, because this is where it's going to sit on top of the side panels. And it goes in exactly as far as the original. So, We'll mount it to the body starting there and trim everything else down to match it. So the next thing I'm going to do is start curving this out. 
And I've marked roughly where it starts and ends on the original. So as soon as I figure out how I'm going to do this, I'll get to that. Alright, the uh, next thing to do is to roll the bead across the bottom of it. And because this thing is pretty flimsy because of just how long it is, I clamped a piece of plywood to the back side of it to hold it straight. So hopefully it shouldn't distort too much when I roll it. Now the last step was to roll the bead on the top, and I thought I filmed doing that, but I guess not. Anyway, it's pretty self-explanatory. I just got this line from a pattern of the original. I like the lower one. I clamped a piece of wood on here to keep this rigid while I was rolling it, and it came out pretty good. So now we'll start fitting it. Now, all around, it's fitting pretty good. Now, the bottom here, instead of being a gradual curve, it's supposed to be kind of sharp right here. I've looked at a few originals, and that's exactly how they are. Around the top, it needs a little dressing off. I don't like this gap here. I might do something about that. But, for the most part, it's pretty good so we don't have to adjust anything. Now the mounting flange on each side where they attach to the door post. Now the original I have, it's got a really narrow flange and it was just nailed on, which I guess is the way the early ones are done. I know by 1915 they were using like three or four big wood screws that went into it. And around mid-1915 they added a carriage bolt at the bottom that went all the way through to the outside of the body. So apparently this is a stress point. There's a lot of strain on it. The carriage bolt on the later ones was visible on the outside. The bolt head was about here. Which you may notice on touring car bodies from mid-1915 up to, I think, 1921 when they redesigned them. Now, I don't want to use that design because there's not supposed to be an exposed bolt head here. So I had to get a little clever. So on the door post, I drilled four holes all the way through to mount it. And on the other side, I installed these. Whatever they're called. And drove them into the wood. So they're like having a nut with a washer on here. Now, it's not time to install the backrest permanently yet, but I had to install these before the side panel could go on. So, to assemble it, 
All I need to do is drive bolts in from the inside. And I'm probably going to put a plate in here to reinforce it also. Well, that's it for this video. Now, like I said, I'm working on the left side panel, getting that ready to install. And after that's done, We'll work on the backrest, I'll get the framing for it made, and I've already started on the seat frame for the front. So, within a few days of working on this, I should have the front half of the body pretty much done. And what that means is I can throw everything else back on this thing and start driving it. And what's important about that is if I start driving this thing, my enthusiasm is going to go way up and I'm going to be really motivated to get it done. So hopefully I'll be able to get all that done pretty soon. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.